meeting to order. Please stand and join us for the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please join us for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> I'd like to welcome you all. Thank you for coming to our morning meeting. Prior to the school board voting, the public is at liberty to speak. That is during item six on our agenda in regards to the particular item on the floor. Comments not pertaining to items on the agenda will be heard under general public comments. Please limit your comments to three minutes. Okay, we'll begin uh, with item 2.1. Approved minutes of the February 1, 2024 Glades County School Board Workshop at 530. Okay. We have a motion by Ms. Pierce. Second. Second by Ms. Allen. Any discussion? All, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> Item 2.2, approved minutes of the February 8, 2024 Glades County School Board Workshop at 830 a.m. Hang on just a second. Mine didn't show anything. They're not showing the Okay. So moved. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm looking at the wrong thing. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Like what? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we did 2.1, right? Yes, ma'am. We're ready for three. Yes. Okay. Well, actually, I'm sorry, Madam Chairman. Yes. I think the motion that we just approved was a workshop. Okay, so then we need to approve the minutes of the February 22nd meeting. I'm so sorry. I'm looking on my computer and it's an old meeting. I'm going to go to take them now and I'll do better. Okay, so we need to um, retract that motion. Who made that motion? Ms. Pierce, would you make a, a move to retract that motion? So moved. Okay, and so all in favor to retract the motion? Aye. Okay, any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, so now we will go to the correct agenda, <laughs> and I will ask for approval of the minutes of the February 22nd, 2024 Glades County Regular School Board meeting at 6 p.m. Second. second. Motion by Ms. Pierce, second by Ms. Allen. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. All right, item 3.1, update on new elementary school. Okay. Mr. Gresset, Mr. Wasman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, Mr. Wiseman with me too. I don't know. Awesome. I'm John. I think you mentioned it. John Wiseman. You brought the big guns out today. Pardon me? You said you brought the big guns out today. He is a big gun. That's, that's right. right. Actually, that's you. Maybe you missed it. Just to kind of keep you updated. Here's a schematic of where the schools, how the school is going to go. And on the back side, the bus garage. Okay, we do that. Very nice. That's at 50 feet. Okay, so just to kind of keep you in the loop of uh, the, the schematic. Mr. Mr. Wiseman, of course, is ready to put a shovel on the ground, as we are as well. In fact, he was just, he was just talking to me. He said he's going to try and see if he's got some pull of Tallahassee and see if we can kind of. Yeah, you want to explain that? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, first off, thank you for having us. We're, we're excited to be getting going on this project for y'all. And uh, we, uh, um, we're we in agreement between owner, architect, and contractor on our schedule going forward. So um, I would say a key milestone is us being able to start construction next August. And if we can do that, then we think we can have it done by Christmas. So it'll be a nice Christmas present for the first year of next year. Yeah, the next year, yeah, right. yeah. That's about a, about a 16 month uh, project. So there's a lot to do. My guys are super excited about coming here and, and working. We've got a couple of former uh, rodeo hands who became 
builders. So, you know, they work for me, so they're excited about working with you all. So it's, it, it's really a neat thing, and we're looking forward to it. Um, we do have the schematic design now, so we can start helping the architect with planning and trying best practices, and then later on during the uh, process before we get started, we'll have uh, uh, both career fairs, trying to find people local that can work uh, on the project, and then also companies that are capable of breaking the packages up to kind of fit some, some of the local companies that, uh, I say local, it's a pretty big net that we'll put out, but uh, so local people can be involved in, in building a project and be a part of it. That's, it's a big thing to be able to drive by something and say, I helped build that. Okay. So, that's, so we're looking forward to that. And uh, I can answer any questions, but uh, we've now got a schedule. We've now got a, a very good schematic plan. Uh, architect is a very good architect, and we, we have a great long-standing relationship. So I, I think this is going to be a, you know, fingers crossed, a smooth project. And I've enjoyed working with Brian so far. you got a good man here to keep you all informed. And, and I'll try to help him, too, to, to get you guys the best information possible. When will the weekly um, the weekly updates begin? Is that whenever the first shovel goes in the ground, or? Well, I typically like to you know I defer to the architect, and, okay. um, and Greg is an ex excellent at this, and he's done several projects like this. Um, we are okay to do it weekly as, as we move into what we call the there's three phases of the design. There's the schematic phase, which was just completed. Then there's design development, and then after that we do the construction documents. So. Probably midway through the design development is what I would guess Greg and Brian would you know, start having weekly updates. Okay. And uh, um, and he may say every two weeks, but you know, the architect kind of leads us through this process and then we take over and lead through the construction process. And we will have weekly meetings during construction. But it is a good practice for us to be you know, keeping you updated at, at least every two weeks, if not every week, during the design phase. And uh, so that's... Um, and we can we can do that and kind of contour to what, what the owner needs and what, what you would like to have. So however you would like to do it, we work for you. So we're, so we're you happy to. Start. You said August of this year, right? Yes, ma'am. August twenty four yeah. being the school, December twenty five. Yeah, I'm looking okay. at if, if the kids are back in school and you see us out there with shovels, that's that's a that's a good thing. That means that we can get it done. And um, what I was referring to with Brian is uh, the. The long lead time is dealing with the state. It's the South Florida Water Management District because you do your own permitting, uh, and that's a very good thing because uh, schools are, are set up that way. But you do have to get outside approvals on certain things, and one of those things is South Florida Water Management District, which we call it swift mud in our industry, which doesn't move very swiftly. It's kind of muddy. <laughs> but, uh, but we're going to try to uh, see if we can expedite that that review process. But no promises. But I'm I'm going to go. Big on, on, on our collective behalf. So, Thank you, sir. Happy to answer any other questions. Yes. So you said there, you needed some help in Tallahassee. Is there anything that we could do to help with that? I don't know yet. Uh, so I, I think the, this is a kind of a unique project where you know everybody wants to see this project go forward as fast as possible, and there's a lot of people outside of the district that are rooting for you to do well. Right. So that that all helps. So. If I see a need, I will certainly reach out to first to Brian and then Dr. Barfield and say, here's what we need you to do. Okay. And we have Patrick Bell's doing a phenomenal job yes. for our district. And I was really excited to see that it's in the governor's budget, um, the 35 million. So we great. will be for yeah. our, so that's wonderful. Yeah. So we're going to be up. Uh, uh, they, they approve the budget uh, tomorrow mm -hmm. and uh, they drop their handkerchief. And as long as the governor doesn't, uh, um, doesn't strike anything, but you, it was in his budget, so right. I don't see why and he would change anything, especially with all the extra money revenue that's coming into the state. So I'm, I'm extremely hopeful and expecting it to be approved as it is. We heard that there was a, a long applause from both both chambers and, and, and that everyone was very pleased with the budget, so from the Senate and the House side. So that's good because, I mean, you know, it's not just Glades County. It's going to affect many counties that, you know, but we, we got a really substantial amount, so we will be our... Uh, yeah, it's, it's, you're getting ready to, you're, you know, what you're doing is a great thing. Is, you know, I'm a product of the public school system, and, and I know how hard it is for you all. My, my oldest son is a public school teacher and a football coach. Football coach is a big thing. But, uh, um, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's what you guys are doing is a great thing for your district. So, And I know you've worked hard to get it to this point. And sometimes it's harder to get it to this point than it is to actually go build it. So I have an easy job. So <laughs> <laughs>
And thank you for coming today. Oh, happy to be here. You'll see a lot of me, um, uh, myself or Mike Riley. Um, you know, Mike will be down here quite a bit, but I, I want to certainly be available and help answer questions, especially during this phase, because you know it's important that we encourage everybody to have a sense of urgency, which Brian definitely yeah. does. So yeah. that's that's easy um, to make sure that we stay disciplined in our schedule during pre, what we call pre-construction, which is the design phase, and then construction. You know, we're super disciplined. Coming, no matter what one doing. one more question I have is when when these jobs post mm -hmm. when how will we be able to communicate that with our with the public how will we be able to share that with our community we're, we're, we have a an online process that we use and we work with you know, Hillsborough County Schools Manatee uh, a lot of different districts so it's very important that we maintain open and transparent communication and also when we receive the bids uh, from you know, it'll be a public opening where you know Brian or you know, you know some of your you know whoever you want represented to be there to observe us collecting the bids to make sure that it's fair and transparent for everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, so that process has to be you know very very open. Okay, perfect. Um, so it's a I see very smart. You don't have to be smart to be a builder. You have to hire smart people. I'm very smart staff that does all that. Mm -hmm. So I can I can tell you that it's open and transparent and. All the districts we work with like our system. I just, I just know for our community that was um, in the the process of selecting Culpepper and um, as the builder. That was one of the things that we. I remember the committee really liked about Culpepper was that you know you did speak a lot about community and that we would be able to hire you know local and I know local. I mean, it's a very wide, well, but we got a lot of people in Glades County that need jobs. So that's we that's like to do a you know a, a job fair where. Um, you know, we're inviting companies, but then we also try to have, once we get companies on board, we want to do a career fair where right. those companies can hire local people, you know, for the course of the project. And maybe, and a lot of them will stay on with the company and you know, be on. So it's, it's a great relationship, creating opportunity, and, and it helps us to have good local people working there, on the project. Are we going to be able to share that on our website? Yes, we, we can, and we can help you phrase it and kind of explain our process and then you can edit it however you want, but at least give you a, an explanation of what we try to do as well. Um, we were talking in, uh, on Monday in the office about possibly even reaching out a little bit further in both, you know, to both coasts because we have, uh, and we've done work over in uh, Broward County as well. And you know, a lot of those subs, you know, we want to get as many subcontractors as possible with a local preference, of course. But then also, you know, if subs are coming from further away, they want to hire local people because it's, it's more cost effective for them. So it's a, it's a process that we follow. And it, it, I'm hoping you'll be happy with our, our efforts in that regard. We're happy. <laughs> so, so just kind of go back to what I gave you. The, I gave you two pages. The, the second page is, is the budget. That's, that's what's in the House and Senate. Just so you can see that um, that, that other $18.5 million that we asked for is in that budget. It's, it shows that second year funding is going to be, I think, $35 million. Mm -hmm. I gave out my last paper to you. Yes, it was. <laughs> yeah, $35 million. We have to remember that we've already received over $17 million for this year. So um, that, this thirty-five dollars is the, the second grouping of money. So we're looking over $51 million for this project. <laughs> And we got to remember that there are actually four pieces to the project. There's building the school, which is number one. There's also building the, the bus garage, which would be right behind the school board office. And on the back page of your map, it shows how the, the bus garage is going to be working behind us. Of course, you'll, you'll see that it does not impede on any of the baseball fields. It doesn't go, doesn't, we don't, we're not moving any fences or anything like that. Um, so, it, but it's going to be behind us. So that's, that's the second part. The third part is going to be renovating the, the two buildings, the Ritchie building and the Pre-K building that are actually on site at the elementary school because we're renovating those for district offices because part four is when we're going to raise or we're going to demolish the elementary school and with that we're going to take away those beautiful 40-some year portables that our district office people are actually in right now. Um, so 
Yeah, I'm, I'm being facetious, of course. <laughs> but uh, but that's all that's all part of it. So it's really there's four, four pieces that we got funded for, uh, not just the school, but it's also the other pieces. And um, Mr. Wiseman and I we're gonna we're gonna walk the property behind us um, after the meeting because we want really want to take a look at it because we have another project that we have coming in, and that's our electric buses. We have, of course, the order 13 electric buses, and all that, we were able to do that only because we received a grant from the federal government, or over $5 million grant. Um, we, we would not have ordered uh, electric buses otherwise. I mean, there are, there are a lot of pros and cons to electric buses, there's no doubt about that. Uh, one of the cons would be if, that of the cost of an electric bus. A diesel bus costs about one hundred and fifty to one hundred sixty thousand dollars right now. A, an electric bus costs three hundred and seventy-five thousand. Our budget cannot afford a three hundred and seventy-five thousand dollar bus, but we were able to get this grant, so we were able to do that. The grant would not allow us to purchase diesel buses. It was only it was a Clean Air Act, so it was for electric buses. Um, of course, we know that. From our discussion before, we have a very aging bus uh, or bus situation. We have some buses that are still on the road that we purchased in the 90s. Um, so there's some very old buses that we are going to be replacing with the buses coming in. We're actually going to have 13 new buses, six buses actually in in, in Moorhaven, um, seven buses in at West Glades electric buses. And they're all going to have air conditioning. Um, right now, we only have two air conditioned buses, and I know that there are people that they uh, they complain, how come we don't have more air conditioned buses? Well, in the past, the the previous regime that chose not to to spend an extra ten thousand dollars to get air conditioning in a bus. They're being very careful with the budget, of course, which I understand. And of course, with the budget, you know, when we're only receiving about less than, a, right around a million dollars in order to take care of everything from air conditioning to fixing roofs to any, any kind of, of projects. You know, taking $160,000 $160, to buy a bus every year isn't always feasible. You know, we try to do that as much as possible, but there are several, several years that we skipped buying buses, and that's why out of our 19 buses, over half of them are over 10 years old. So, but uh, as far as the project, we, we're going to try and get moving on the, the, the bus, buses behind us because new buses are coming in in August and we have to put charging stations in. So that means that we're going to need to scrape some of the, um, the shoulders or whatever mm -hmm. that are actually in, in the parking lot right now so that we can start, start that process. Not a part of this process, but something that uh, Mr. Wiseman has agreed to help us with too is, is also expanding the parking area for buses in, at the West Glades area. We're going to be taking a look at that. Now, Mr. Boyles has been working very hard on getting uh, bids for that. In fact, uh, he came up with a, with a great idea of how we're going to do that at West Glades. And so we're pursuing that. And, and Mr. Wiseman is going to help us with. Well, actually, we're the, our, our architect's going to have to help a little more of the design phase, but he's going to help with possibly getting us some bids and stuff like that of what, so we can get the best bang for our buck. So, all right, so I think, I think we're caught up on, on everything that's going on right now, just with facilities. So the new electric buses will be um, ready for the next school year? That's the plan. Is they're supposed to be in August. Yeah, end of July, beginning of August. <coughs> And of course, of course, we'll still have diesel buses on, on the road as well um, because of some of our long routes like our Buckhead Ridge and Palmdale, some of those routes, you know, there's electric buses aren't, aren't feasible for that right now. But all the routes at West Glades really can be done with electric buses because they're all really more of a, a under 60 mile per hour range morning and then afternoon. Unfortunately, unfortunately, with all of these projects, you all have to go through the water management district. So, one of the things I asked the engineer about the West Glades was, do we have to go to the water management district just to get approval? And he said yes. So, he's looking into how fast we can get that done. And so, we'll follow up with him probably tomorrow to see where he's at. But everything runs through the water management district to make sure we don't do anything against 
their rules. I think that when we get a little closer and the, we, we receive the buses, I think I'd like to do some sort of like a, maybe a community, not an open house, but kind of like an information, because I think there is a lot of information, misinformation out there right now, and kind of just to, to explain and to let people see or maybe even ride on them. I mean, I myself, you know, I, I, I've shared with you, I'm, I'm very, um, I don't have a lot of knowledge on, you know, electric vehicles. I know, but I, I'm hearing more about them. And I know when we made this decision, we really talk, we really researched it. But I think in the community, I think it's something that we need to, to kind of really put out there just to, just for assurance. So. Okay. And just a reminder, we have, a con we're going to have a contract with Highland Electric. Mm -hmm. We pay them. We pay the amount per bus, like fifteen thousand dollars per bus per year, mm -hmm. um, and what they what they do is they will, they, if, if a bus breaks down, they will fix it. In fact, if a bus breaks down, they will actually pay us the diesel costs for running a diesel bus until that bus is repaired. If the battery goes out, they will replace replace the battery, and also they they pay the electric charges. So we won't be paying. We'll, we'll be taking 13 buses off the road that we won't be paying diesel for, and they will be paying the electric to charge those buses. I'm excited. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll move along to item 4.1, approve the January 2024 finance reports and warrant register. We have a motion. We have a motion by Ms. Pierce. Second. Second by Ms. Allen. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. All right, we'll move to item 5.1. Do we have any amendments to the agenda? Awesome, so we get to skip over that. <laughs> item 6.1, uh, welcome to the public comment on agenda items segment of our meeting. <clears throat> there will be another chance for general public comments further in the meeting. These forums allow the community to engage with the school board on matters concerning our education system. Your insights are vital to our educational decisions. As we proceed to this segment, I would like to outline some important expectations to ensure that an orderly and constructive meeting about the business of the board occurs. All speakers should have submitted a completed comment card before this segment and given to Jackie Smith. Speakers will be called in the order received. Each speaker will state their full name and shall confine their remarks to the business of the school board. Each speaker will have up to three minutes. Uh, Dr. Barfield will be our timer today. She will signal when one minute remains. Please conclude promptly when the timer ends. Please address your comments to the board, not to the audience. We expect all remarks to be delivered in a manner consistent with school board policy. Abusive language, personal attacks, or disruptive behavior will not be tolerated. Please direct any personal grievances or personnel issues in writing to the school board office. Audience members are requested to listen quietly and respectfully. Outbursts, applause, or other interruptions that disrupt the meeting are not acceptable. And, and I just want to interject here. We've been very lenient with that in the past, especially our last meeting, and I was scolded by our school board attorney. So please do not speak from the audience uh, if you haven't filled out a card. Uh, any person that interferes with the expeditious or orderly process of this meeting after first being warned <clears throat> that such continued interference will result in removal will be removed. We appreciate your cooperation. So let's begin with our first speaker. Our first speaker today is Ms. Brittany Gonzalez. Brittany, if you'll please come up to the microphone, please. prior to attending Westlake's EPK program, and it was a 50-50 mix, 
Unfortunately, we did not have a great um, experience. I feel like the situation really wasn't conducive to learning, which was the whole purpose in us, placing him into that program. Um, in the beginning, it was okay. I felt like my son would come home and discuss things maybe they had learned, but as the year went on, sorry, a little nerve-wracking, um, there was more kids that had additional needs that entered into the program, and he would just come home talking about the behavior more than what was actually being taught or learned. And I also know that there was times where other staff members would just talk about how, you know, they could hear a lot of screaming or just different things based on some of the behavioral needs of the kids in the class. And so it's just concerning to think that if we do combine the two, I still have two more to enter the school program. And already knowing how that experience was, I just don't know if the BPK program will be doing as much benefit for the kids going into kindergarten. <clears throat> and then also, you, you have one teacher and one pair for the class. Will we really be able to give the children the attention that they need, um, especially because we have no control over knowing um, what kids are gonna be in the program at the time, and um, just the level of attention or assistance that they might require. So I would hope that we, going forward, you know, you guys both know not to make the change, um, but that's just based off of our experience the previous year. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. And Brittany, I want to apologize because I said it for one hour, and you, and that's why the timer didn't go off. So <laughs> if you want, can you have no, forty-five more minutes if you want? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Do we need to reassign that job? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you very much. You got it now. Thank there you. you go. All right, next we have Kaylee Hernandez. You want an hour or do you want three minutes? <laughs> <laughs> teacher at Westlake. Um, this is my second year there. Um, I am addressing the proposal for IPK and BBK to merge. Um, I've been teaching BBK for 12 years and um, I'm not so much um, for it um, just because you know what uh, Brittany had just brought up. Um, it, it does take a lot these are small children um, and to merge three four and five year olds together is hard it is very hard um, I have worked in uh, the early childhood uh, system since I was 16 and um, it's it's difficult it really is um, I uh, had a meeting with Miss Barfield about uh, the concerns I have reached out to the coalition um, and the CEO um, has um, said she would be willing to speak with Ms. Barfield about maybe trying to get more grants, um, funding, um, uh, school readiness even, um, to help the program stay separate. Um, I would hate to see it go um, at Westlake. There is a lot of parents wanting to bring you know their children and looking forward to the program um, uh, I, I don't know what else to say really uh, I I'm very passionate about pre-k um, um, it's hard um, because if it does merge I will no longer be the teacher because I'm not ESC certified. So um, I really hope there's something we can do. Um, like I said, uh, I do have, you know, 
friends on the board of the coalition willing to help bring more funding to the program for West Lakes. Um, so I am willing to help any way I can to keep the program going um, strong and, and stuff like that. So. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our next speaker, Lauren Thompson. <clears throat> Hello again, Lauren Thompson. I am not a pre-K teacher, I'm a first grade teacher at Morehaven Elementary, but I do have four children, three who have gone through the pre-K program at Morehaven Elementary, and I work alongside, obviously, the pre-K teachers, and. Um, in our room, it's a self at our school, it's a self-contained room that has students that are three, four, and five, or three, four, for sure. I really just wanted to come and urge you as a board, I understand that this proposal came from Ms. Boyles, who has expertise and knowledge in ESC, but there's other people in our district that have additional knowledge as well. And I'm not saying that to demote Ms. Boyle's knowledge or to say that there wasn't any thought that went into the plan. This was a fiscally responsible plan that was developed, but that to me seemed like maybe the only lens that it was used in. I don't know how long it's been since I've walked into a pre-K classroom, but it's, I don't know how she speaks so calmly. It's its a lot in those rooms. Miss um, Austin's room is a totally different environment and scenario, and the proposal that's before you now is to combine those children who maybe that kind of situation scenario don't fit their needs best. And again, she actually quoted that you don't know what's coming in the future as well. So say you have a child, I know for instance, I see children in this awesome room that sensory things are just too much for them. A pre-K room is a lot of sensory overload. A kindergarten room is a lot of sensory overload. Um, and I actually love how Mr. Wiseman explained the construction of our new school because he said there was three phases to it a schematic design which i feel like is what miss Boyles has presented you here's the schematic here's the idea here's the design the next phase goes into design pick and choose what works what doesn't but that comes with conversation with all the parties involved the teachers that will be executing the plan the parents that are going to have children in the classrooms and i'm again asking the same thing that i've asked before of this board i know this is not how education runs i understand there's legislative requirement bureaucratic red tape i understand that's what's before you and that's the challenges that you face when you go from this conference to that conference this meeting with the state to that meeting with the state but i also know that it doesn't work anywhere there's too many teachers that quit this job there's too many educators that are leaving the profession because this is the problem that we have a design is presented here do it and there is no question of hey what do you think do you think it'll work Joe actually gave me the analogy and I don't build anything so I would know I don't even like to build with Legos so he gave me the analogy though that I thought was very poignant and very for me visual that a architect and an engineer design create here I love it I want this beam to do that I want this thing to do this this door is going to open like this then they hand it to a contractor they hand it to Mr. Wiseman and then Mr. Wiseman says that door cannot do that that's what's before you now, a design. But some of this that she's proposed, that is proposed, doesn't work. Ms. Austin feels that, and obviously so do other pre-K teachers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. Okay, um, I just wanna <clears throat> also add at this point in the um, agenda, we are also advised by our attorney not to make comments after the public makes their comments. So. Just because we don't address something that was said, please don't think that we didn't hear you, because we did hear you and we appreciate you being involved, um, but we're just advised to not respond until maybe later in the meeting we can, okay? So thank you very much. All right, now we'll move to the consent agenda. Would anyone, does anyone have any item on the consent agenda that they would like to pull for extra discussion? All right, seeing none, I would look for a motion to approve the consent agenda. A motion to approve consent agenda. Sorry. Okay. We have a motion by Ms. Clement, second by Ms. Prowant. Any discussion? <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Awesome. Okay, now we'll move to action item eight, 8.1. Uh, Dr. Barfield, do we want to ask Ms. Boyles to give us a presentation or how do you want to proceed yes. on that? Okay, Ms. Boyles. Thank 
should have a copy. My name is Rhonda Boyles. I'm the ESC director for Blades County Schools. Um, you guys should have a copy of the proposal for the 24-25 um, school year in purple. I know we did a um, we did a workshop here a couple weeks ago, okay, and we kind of went into extensive, like what our costs were, um, how we were no longer going to have ESSER funds, and we're losing about like three hundred thousand dollars a year. Um, on our pre-K and how we can kind of tighten those up. Um, so the proposal is for the 24-25 school year, as you can see on the purple form, that Moorhaven Elementary School will have two IPK classrooms. Now an IPK classroom, um, at that, when we had for enrollment, let me go here to our last one, at that time when we talked, we had six ESC students that will be coming back this year, okay, for Moorhaven Elementary. Yes, we'll probably get a few more staffed along the way, but if we have two classrooms, that would be three in each classroom, okay? Um, and then we would have a general mix ability of other students that don't have special needs. Keep in mind, students with special needs um, are usually developmental delay when they're in pre-K. Um, and I just feel like the reason why we did this was, was cost effective, right? We're basing it on space at the school, budgeting, but also we're thinking about what's good for kids. And if we walk into any K, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 classroom, you're always going to have the ESC kids in those classrooms. And all kids can learn. And all kids deserve an education with their peers and not just alike peers kids learn from other kids and I just feel like you know and the reason why we would put the kids together is because you know if they can learn from other students and they have a, they have a right to an education just like everybody else and they have ES, we have ESC funding that comes in for those students that have disabilities in pre-k um, so if they need an additional pair in that classroom and it's an ESC student, then we give them that additional pair. If they have to have accommodations or if they have to have shortened schedules or whatever their IEP says, they get that, right? So I just feel like, you know, combining the class is going to be best physically also for us, but also for the students, for the students' education. Because when they go to kindergarten, there's not going to be separate classrooms. They're going to be in those classrooms. And this is a time for those kids to grow and flourish and learn um, because that's foundational. So the plan is for two IPK classrooms, and this is based on two years that we've had uh, pre-K here in Moorhaven, based on the numbers that we've had for the past two years, right? So two IPK classrooms, a mix, additional pair of support if needed based on classroom numbers and need. Again, like I said, that we're going to have one parent in the classroom and one teacher, but if we have students that need more support, we will hire additional parent or whatever that kid needs on their IEP. Um, at West Glades, we're looking at one IPK classroom, uh, which would be the same. And the reason why we're looking at one is because we have a total of 19 students at West Glades. We talked about, um, you know, that's as of right now, and then last year we had roughly the same. So those separate classrooms have three or four kids in, right? Three or four kids. And they need to be able to be in with the other students. And I just feel like combining those, it's not physically responsible to have two classrooms that you're paying for, and you have 16 in one and three in another. So that's the reason why we were looking at that. Um, it will be a whole day free pre-K program for Glades County residents only and staff waivers only. Um, so it's, we're not going to be charging wraparound care. It's not going to be a half a day program. It's a whole day program. Allocations are based on budget. Again, I go back to budget, space, and at the school sites, and then of course our enrollment. Lottery has already opened up March 4th through April 5th, and then the phone calls will be made at the end of April to see who has received a slot for the 24-25 school year. 
Um, I did put on here that pre-K is to start one week after the K through 12. Um, so whenever we have the school day for K through 12 that comes back to school, we'll just start pre-K one week later. And the reason why I wanna do that is to give them time to prepare, make sure that we have kids with IEPs, that we have everything that they need. Teacher has time to plan out what they need to do for those kids to prepare, and they're not overstimulated when they come in on the first day of school. Okay. I have a question. Yes, well, is there a, a class size limit for pre-K? It's uh, 20. <coughs> is it 20? Yes. 20. Okay. So if we got 21 kids, would we have to separate? Or let's say 25 kids sign, or would we even allow that? No, many? we're going to cap it. We're going to cap it. Okay. Yes. Gotcha. Ms. Boyles, I just want to just confirm that we're, it's ESC students, yes. then staff children, yes. and then Glades resident. We are not accepting any Henry County residents. No, we're not going to take any Henry County residents. And it's just based on, you know, we're a very small district. We're three schools. And I know Henry County, a lot of people like to compare us to Henry County and say, oh, well, they've got all these pre-K classes. But they have more schools than we do. They get a lot more funding than we do. Um, and they can, you know, grants, they get extra grant money, but they also get more funding because they have more students. So they have a bigger pot to pull from, right? So that's the reason why it's, you know, we have to work within our space, within our budget, and what our kids need. Well, one of the things that I was really adamant about is that we have a full day program and not charge parents, and I appreciate you accommodating that, that I only speak for myself, but that was really important to me that we have a full day program without charging for that. And we're not doing away with BPK. I think, you know, there's that rumor out there that, hey, we're doing away with BPK at West Coast. No, we're not. We're just combining them. We're combining, we're just putting all kids. When you think about it, it's a pre-K program for all kids. Okay, thank you, Ms. Boyles. Um, Mr. Grasseth, I think you wanted to speak. <coughs> okay, I just want to want to go over some of the history, especially of West Glades with BPK. I think you all you all know that we have we have a 50-year lease with RCMA, and RCMA is the pre-K program that's actually on the West Glades property. We lease that property to them, and they have done they have conducted pre-K since the school opened, I believe. Um, we, we made a decision to add a pre-K only because we got to a, a position where RCMA was not accepting some of the special ed students, some of the three-year-old special ed students. And by law, we have to, we have to educate those students. So really the plan was, really we needed to open up just a special education pre-K classroom. Um, because RCMA is there to take care of the, all the other pre-K. There's all there, they they have done that in the past. This, is, this was the first year that they hadn't done that. Um, we actually had some extra money that Dr. Barfield chose to open up another pre-K because of learning loss during COVID. And in doing that, of course, now we end up with two pre-K classes, which takes up two pre-K two classroom spaces. And if you, and, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you, but if you remember, we tried to actually buy out RCMA um, and they wanted something ridiculous to, to for the portables. And I remember we brought, then it was, it was a back and forth. So if you that, remember, that was a couple of years ago. So that's why we decided to go with the pre-K program or the- um, We need to remember too that I, I really don't know any other districts, but there are. But I don't know any other districts personally that offer full day free pre K. There's not. <laughs> they, ever, I mean, on most of them they have they have BPK. That's a half day situation. The kids either pay the second half or they go home. Okay. Also, what I, I don't know of any places other than special ed pre K where we pay pre-K teacher a teacher salary and, the, and the, when that teacher is not a certified teacher um, so it's actually costing probably ten to twenty thousand dollars more for a head teacher that would be in a regular pre-K classroom 
as opposed to what we're doing. So we, we were offering free services, and you gotta remember that VPK only pays for 540 hours per year. And it's based on attendance. Based on attendance, that's right. And so really that's, it's 100, that's if they I think they're at 135. Yeah, 50,000 per classroom, give or take. Yeah, right. but, but there are some BPKs that because of these hour restrictions, they don't even start until September or maybe October. And then they get done at the beginning of May. It's not a full year program. So what we're offering is really above and beyond what most districts are doing. By, by, by keeping this, this class, we are able to service our ESE, service student, ESE students that we have to, plus we're allowing other students to come into there as well, and it's free. Um, I, don't, I don't think you're gonna find many parents that are gonna find that anywhere else. So I just, just wanna give you a history, and just remind you that, you know, we're not doing away with all, all BPK because RCMA is still there. I mean, it, it was there before and it's still there now. Right. So. And we do have the RCMA at Booker T. Washington, and then we have the RCMA at West Heights, too. So, so those are other community um, BPKs. Thank you very much. Appreciate okay. it. Thank you. All right. Do we have a motion so we can do some further discussion as a board? <coughs> a motion. Okay, we have a motion by Ms. Allen. Do we have a second? Second. Second, Ms. Pierce. Any discussion? All right, seeing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Nay. We have one opposed, Ms. Clement. Motion carries. Okay, amended agenda items. We didn't have any, so we're going to skip that. General public comments. I believe we have one of those. And that is Gary Blake. <clears throat> I thought I recognized you and now I see the name. I think it's coming back to me. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm Gary Blake. And uh, I have a list of items there, but primarily what it is is uh, soliciting your support on a couple of items. Uh, we've already discussed the bathroom situation out at uh, Washington Park. Apparently it's been about three years going through the process and what we... They have no clue. I know. <laughs> they but, have, yeah. but anyhow, you don't have a clue, but we need your support because apparently <laughs> we were told that... That um, happens a lot, but go ahead. <laughs> well, I didn't know until last, what, Monday Just night, kidding. so yes. you're getting it. Just kidding. Yes, uh, and we, when we find out, we say this is atrocious. Uh, but anyhow, the bottom line is uh, apparently you lease that property to the county. The county is, says that they can't do anything until they get the support from the school board to go forward with putting a bathroom out in the Washington Park area, which uh, will serve the community. So that's one of the things we're soliciting your help from or your okay to say hey go ahead the other thing is uh, I don't know if you're aware that that the school board also owns that back street which is Oak Street as well as the uh, there's a uh, I guess you call it a driveway or whatever that goes around the basketball court that serves the community center well uh, anytime we have rain you got mud and one of the things we're looking at uh, is is possible to get that back street as well as that area paved. I mean, it's not paved. Mm -hmm. And I know we talked to uh, your, uh, I guess your public works guy, uh, and he that's when we found out, oh no, that's not ours, this is the, the county, and the county said, well, we gotta get the city. So I'm just trying to get the ball rolling. Right, we right. need your help on that. Um, I have a question, yes. if I could, Mr. Blake. Um, the, the section of the driveway and the street paving that you're talking about, is that included in the lease with the county? I was told that it was. And okay. I, I, I'm trying to think of the guys. Okay. Name. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and so basically said, we can't do nothing because That's we part of their that lease. The, okay. And so we're saying that, well, before they get started, they got to get your right. okay to, right. to modify it, right. which kind of strange. 
So uh, we want to at least get that ball started so when the question comes back, you say, yep, we we'll agree, go find the money. Uh, he also said that he could help me with finding block grants and everything, so I will work with him so we can have the money already ready so when they get the okay, then we can say, do the work, let's go. Because uh, it's kind of a, a travesty to think, think that it is 21st century and we're still dealing with mud in a community. Yeah, the school doesn't even yeah, nothing. It's ridiculous. And lastly, I know this is not, but I really did want to ask a couple of questions to the gentleman about the new elementary school. Uh, you ask when you're going to start the solicitation for local participation. He did not give you the date. He just said you're going to do it. So is it two months before, three months before? Just kind of get an idea. Because what I want to do is start outreach so that we can get local participation and if they need certain certifications, they can start getting that ready so that when you start the clock, the clock we can already have people lined up so that we can get local support here. Right now, the, the construction documents are supposed to be complete. Which that's what you give the subs to bid at the, I think, the first or second week of June. So that's when the advertising process will start. Once we're confident we have the documents complete, then we'll advertise. And then um, there's a 30-day time frame where people will go out and get bids, so, or, or turn bids in, and then we'll review it over the next couple of weeks. But it's that that time of, uh, of June to mid-July. Uh, but we'll publish those dates well in advance. That's kind of the time frame right now, but it's based on when the documents are complete. So as we see them completing, then we'll be able to advertise. Okay, but you know, you said you're going to start in August, and that's going to be in June, but you kind of got an idea of what type of services that you're going to need, people you're going to need. So I'm, I'm just trying to front load it so that when it happens, we don't have to go, wait a minute, it's going to take Mr. Another Blake, two months. I, I'm, I'm just going to ask you to have a conversation with me. I'm, I'm sorry. Meeting, okay? okay? Is that all right? Would, that would works you, with me. Mr. Yeah. Would you please stay and answer his questions, please, after the meeting? Oh, sure. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very Absolutely. much. Yes. Thank you. Okay. And then I'll, I'll, in my superintendent's report, I'm going to be discussing what he's talking okay. about. Okay. Thank you. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Blake. Yes. Okay, that's all the cards, correct? Okay. All right, we'll move to, um, thank you all very much for your participation. We'll move to board member comments. I'll start with you, Ms. Parlock. Well, I just want to say that I think Chalamet went really well. Um, the parade was awesome. Um, I got way more exercise than I <laughs> expected by the end like that work. float. Um, but but it was very nice um, and I, the other thing that I wanted to say is that I really appreciate um, um, Andrew Kaus and his uh, willingness to come and meet with um, Mr. Gresseth and Dr. Barfield and myself to come to an agreement, a compromise um, so that we do get access to the 50 feet we need to make our school the best that it can possibly be. And um, I think we saw at Chalanica that that 50 feet wasn't going to interfere with anything that was going on over there. Um, but uh, Mr. Kaus um, was, I don't, I don't know what word I'm going to use, but, but I was very happy with the way that meeting went, and he, um, he controlled the meeting, I guess. Is, he and Dr. Barfield controlled the meeting, but he represented the EDC very well. I'll let it go at that. Okay, so um, I was going to ask about the results of your meeting because we're in the sunshine. We can talk about it now. So you feel, could you share with the public and the rest of us sure. what the compromise yeah, was? I, I'll be happy and, to do and that. Um, Mr. Cal started the meeting by letting us know that just, that anything was negotiable except the length of the lease. They were not open to changing the 99 year lease that has 60 years left on it. Um, so, uh, with that being said, we tried to move forward. Um, everything that I had on my list, except for the length of the le lease, they agreed to. Um, they um, 
will grant us the use of the 50 feet. Um, that there'll be a new um, property description drawn up that will um, eliminate that 50 feet from what is covered in the lease. Um, they will continue to provide insurance minimum of a million dollars uh, liability and that could change as need arises and um, I just drew a blank there was there was one of oh the uh, amount of time we, we discussed the amount of time that the um, carnival uh, personnel could be on the property I personally wanted it to be a little shorter but we compromised and agreed on 30 days before and 30 days after so um, they can only come on within that time frame and have to be off uh, after 30 days and um, I think that was it those those three three things um, so they get to use our property for another 60 years uh, except for the 50 feet that will be um, eliminated from the lease and the new lease will be drawn up. Was there any discussion about us using where the carnival rides are during the school year? We did discuss that and they don't have a problem with that. Um, they kind of wanted us to coordinate with them because um, one of their members said, well, I sometimes open the gate and let the soccer teams practice over there or what have you. And um, I, I don't think we really had a problem with that as long as we got to use it whenever mm -hmm. we um, saw the need for right. field days or um, whatever. Right, because I know sometimes youth athletics uses it for their practices mm -hmm. they have in the past. I don't know if they have a need this year, but so that's good. That's good to know. Okay, well, thank you so much for representing us at that meeting. Appreciate you doing that on our behalf. Thank you. Sorry I couldn't get that 99 years changed, <laughs> but that, they let us know right up front that that was non-negotiable. So. Okay, Miss Allen, do you have anything? Well, I'm just thankful that that's behind us, and thank you all for going that extra step, having another meeting to get it behind everyone. Everybody, to move forward now with... Yeah. Faces. <laughs> and I had a great time at Chalonix also. That's it. Yeah. Okay, Ms. Pierce? I want to echo exactly what they said. Um, I had a list of things that I had shared with Dr. Barfield and they addressed every one of them. Leases sometimes are looked at on an annual basis. It's not unusual, just different things, you know, the terms or whatever. I didn't have a problem with the years either. I, but I think that they should be addressed at least every five years, terms, or once a year, or something like that, that I had said. So, um, I mean, and especially if they're going to do something over there. We need, we need to be more <coughs> open with each other. We need to, yeah, them and us, we need to, and the community, for, for whatever needs, needs to be done. But I, too, enjoyed Town Nick. It was wonderful, and I'm excited about the school getting started and that's about it okay miss clement i as well am very happy that everyone was able to finally sit down on a round table of discussion and get this figured out do you know by chance when that document will be prepared and signed it's it actually um i have a um i have a rough draft in my office actually right now um and then i think i'm Probably he wanted me to look over it, but I didn't get it till yesterday afternoon, late, late, and I didn't have really a chance to go back and go through it. Um, but probably in like the day or a day or two. Okay. So. so that will be on our agenda at the next meeting to yes, go ahead and approve that. Okay. okay. Sorry, Miss Clinton. Nope, go ahead. Okay. Um, Miss Wills is here today. They're having <clears throat> at West Claves the field day. My son was so excited this morning. I don't know where he found clothes at to participate in this field day, but he had to change because he looked a little silly. But I hope all those kids have lots of fun. Ms. Wills, I know you're ready for us to get done so that you can get back to the school. 
Um, everything at Chalanooka was so fantastic. I love the community involvement. Thank you for everybody coming together and bringing it a family event like it's supposed to be. Tonight, our Seminole Tribe of Florida 4 H kids is having their cattle show. Last night was our swine show. If you have anything you would like to, or any extra time you'd like to come out, it starts at 7 p.m. We have amazing vendors with lots of good food. Tomorrow is our livestock sale, so the kids are selling their animals. And we ha also have an adult showmanship starting at 5. So if you're interested in coming out to the Seminole Tribe of Florida in Brighton, y'all come see us at 7 p.m. And um, I'm very thankful for the update from Mr. Wiseman and Mr. Gresset on the new school. I'm very excited to see what's happening and being provided documents to see in black and white and very visual. So being able to see things that's right in my face, I'm thankful for that. And that's all I have for now. Thank you. Thank you. So um, <clears throat> I've, I meant to mention this, Ms. Perlall, when you were giving your update, but one of the things in the lease that um, we had not been doing was serving on a committee that would include people from uh, both organizations in the lease. And I think that, Dr. Barfield, if we could, you know, we kind of interpreted that to mean the EDC board, but now in hindsight, I'm thinking maybe one of us needs to serve on the actual Chalanica committee. So, so that when these, that's in our lease, and that was something that we were not doing so when these things come up we would already be at the table know what was going on so i think we need to think about maybe shifting from the edc board to the actual chalanica committee just some food for thought did that was there any mention of that committee in the meeting no we talked about it but i think it really didn't come up about the chalanica committee or the edc mm -hmm. i think that we just really it was just a you know we're just we're neighborly and be you know community minded and let's just have reach out and have a conversation we really didn't get into okay. the specific boards mr. we might not get where we got if we had been doing that for mr little. presley <coughs> had um, done that in the years past and you're right in the last four or five years yeah okay so i'll talk to uh jake and see if he wants one of us to maybe join their committee for next year uh, I had a question about the uh, auditorium use issue that we talked about last time or is anybody working on that to bring us something so I am um, I but right now I've got to I want to bring it to you all and give you options of how you want to okay. to move forward with that so um, I didn't have the um, the amount of um, options until I'll have okay. those. I had I look back at my notes and I think we discussed it before or something but I had some notes about mm -hmm. different organizations and so I'll share that with you just as a reminder of what we talked about in the past but we I feel like we need to get that addressed and fixed mm -hmm. now while it's fresh on our minds. I want to add, yeah. yeah. Any anyone who wants to use it, I would like them to come in front of us and do a presentation. I think that has happened in the past. It seems to me that I remember that when I was principal, people bringing it to the board. If somebody wanted to use the auditorium, they would ask to be on the agenda for the board meeting and they would make their plea for waiving the fees. And then the board would vote. That hasn't happened. Well, so it's a new one. Well, I know, but I wasn't principal with the new one. <laughs> that has, that has we had the old stuff when I was principal. So that could be in the yeah. proposal. That's that going to be in the proposal. I well. just, I just oh, think that, you know, it needs to be said that, you know, we, I mean, Mr. Browning, I mean, we have been very accommodating. I mean, I don't think, I mean, I think there's only been one instance where, or maybe two instances where, you know, it, it, for funerals and stuff like that, that, um, you know, that has not occurred let's just say that but I think that it needs to be a conversation and um, but I want us to have that I think it like what Miss Pro said say I think bringing it to the board and then you as a board decide it, it then it takes it off of one person right exactly. you know if you have Mr. Browning or Mr. Brickle having to 
make that decision, then it's like, well, why did he say that they could have it and I can't have it? So I think it's good that it, bring, it gets right. brought to the board. So we need the written policy. Correct. And then in that policy, anybody that is requesting a waiver Correct. would come before us. Correct. If they're willing to pay the fee and they fit the criteria that we've set as a, uh, you know, an independent business, a profit-making business, mm -hmm. then they wouldn't need to come and ask us. If well, and and no pay. one was trying, I don't, or I wasn't, I don't think any of you were as well. No one was trying to blame past administration, past boards, past superintendents by saying this was their problem. I just said the president in 2015 is when these these guidelines were set. We were just yeah. trying to follow what was previously set. We just need to, you know, if the community, um, if the community wants to utilize it, we want them to have a nice place to have events, but we want to also remember we want to keep it nice. Right, and I want to be aware of the organization, and it just made me think that the vendor, I was disappointed with one of the vendors that was at Chalnica. He had a whole setup of vapes and bongs and pipes, and I was like, why is that at our event? That upset me. Well, we have to remember, too, that we want everybody to use it, but the district is also responsible yeah. for the building. And you know, it wasn't free, and <laughs> it's not free to keep it up. So, obviously, we want everybody to use it, but we got to take care of it, and we got to remember that, too. Right. So, if you would bring us something as yes, soon as you can, I'll, that'd be great. I'll bring it to the next okay. school board meeting. All right. The other thing I, I wrote down, just to remind myself, is our strategic plan. Um, you guys are the just, same thing. Yeah, you guys are so, just taking you really this. Should, taking this. You really should go first. I'm just saying it would make this section a lot shorter. Sure. Um, and I don't know when that got reversed, but in the past, the superintendent did go first, and then we followed up. A motion to move that to where the superintendent <laughs> goes first. Can we have a superintendent A and then a superintendent I'm, B? I'm, meeting? Yeah, you can respond okay. anytime That'd to anything. Good. Um, that we'll discuss that in our meeting. Jackie and I are going to have a meeting about our agenda and how to make it a little better. Um, but anyway, I, I want us to go back. We spent a lot of time on the strategic plan. Money was spent, and we don't revisit it. And I, I want us to, you know, we were all on committees. We were supposed to be in charge of things. We haven't done that. Um, I just like something where we can revisit the strategic plan. If we need to do a workshop or just a section in a meeting, where somebody goes through it with us, something. I just don't want it to be just something up there on the wall that we're not really using as the intended purpose. And um, I think that's all I had. I, I too enjoyed telling Nick. It was great. Had my whole family here. Septic tank went out on Saturday. So that was not good news, but there were like 16 people taking showers in a one bathroom house. So, but we had a great time and um, looking forward to next year already. Am I able to seriously make that motion so that she can go before us? Um, are you sure? Yeah, unless that's changed. Okay. Would you make that, would you make that change and put your remarks first? Is that something you're okay with? Okay. Thank you. We appreciate it. Okay, your turn. You're up. All right. So, I'd like to discuss the strategic plan. <laughs> So um, at my at my director's meeting on Tuesday, Monday, I don't know. The days are running very quickly by. Um, I was told the directors to go through to look at what they are responsible for, and we're gonna we're gonna start there, um, and basically we are going to update the the percentages, update the learning gains, update where we are really looking at the outcome matrices um, and as you can see these are based on when we created the strategic plan so um, you know I think when we originally when we created the strategic plan um, which was a great thing but um, I do I do feel like that you know it, it was intended to be a working strategic plan and we were going to you know work through it and we we're going to do this and but I think, too, I think we kind of went off out of our, not out of our lanes, but kind of off our path because I think some of the things that we felt were, you know, like critical at that time is kind of where the strategic plan leaned towards. And I think now that as we've moved and our data is showing the growth, um, 
that he will, uh, or that we should change some of the the um, outcome me metrics and look at some of the goals and just update it. So um, my directors are going to be, um, we're going to be having another conversation about it, and then I'd like to bring it back to the, the board, um, updating it as, as far as our goals. Okay. Because if you don't remember, um, the goals were academic achievement, which obviously we're going to continue to have our academic achievement, but we have surpassed some of our the metrics that we that we presented because our data grew so well. So um, we need to update that. Our district cohesion, culture, and climate. Um, just looking at how the, the metrics are are being viewed and and how we are, um, you know, with our school safety. And a lot of people don't realize that. A lot of um, a lot of things in the past couple of years that we've done. Yes, it's for doing what's best for students, and that's always going to be first and foremost. But it's also the states come in and said, um, "Look, we we need to make sure that um, that you are in a safe environment, that you have you know the different the different safety." Um, I can't think of the word I'm sitting here trying to use. Um, safety equipment in place. So a lot of things that we've done has also been to, to meet um, what the state has said has to be done. Teacher recruitment and retention, you know, where we were three years ago or even two years ago when we did this is, um, is we've surpassed, so we need to update. And then finally, strategic resources and allocations. So um, I just think that we've come so far in three years and I think we need to update it as a whole. Um, I know the language is still really strong in there about you know where we want to see our district, but I think where we were three years ago, I think we need to look where we're going to be in four years first and eight years. So just kind of make those those additions to it. So yes and yes. <laughs> so Dr. Barfield, my yes. question is, did we meet those goals under academic achievement? That that's kind of what I was talking about, like. I can barely see it from here, 38% to 48%. So the, the goal was, um, for those that are out in the, um, the audience, 38% um, What's the fine print? to 48% in year 25, 26. Okay. And, then, um, and then that is in the FSA in grade three, and then we, which, and then the, Grade 10 literacy will increase from 34 in 2021 to 44%. So if, if, if so we're in the middle of that time correct. frame right now. So yes. that's what we need is just the correct. midpoint. Are we somewhere between? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So what I'd Good. like to do is if you don't mind at the next board meeting, um, I'd like to do a presentation um, to the board of where we are and kind of utilize the data. And if great. you don't mind, is that yeah, okay? Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. So great. all these charts, the numbers in the black arrow. Yes, ma'am. That's where we were in 2021. Yes, ma'am. The numbers in the gold is what our what we wanted to be, what our goal was for 25-26. Although those over there have a goal of 23-24, which we're in right now, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So. Also, if, you know, I can look at this like our goal two is our district cohesion and culture and climate. Um, it's like in 20, it's for um, chronic absenteeism. And, you know, after, after COVID, you know, we've really, I know teachers will tell you that's like a huge, it's been huge to try to get kids back into classrooms. Um, in 2021, the, the chronic student chronic absenteeism went from 12.29 um, and our goal is at 6%. I can tell you we're working very hard to to make that happen. We're having truancy meetings. Um, I know that in one of the things that I'm really, really proud of is that we are working um, is to make sure that um, students that are driving, that their, their driver's license are pulled if they are not coming to school. And right before I walked in this the meeting, I just saw a list of about 17 students that are losing their driver's license. So from Moorhaven High School because they're not coming to school. And then what happens, and I, I will tell you, this is the second time I've received this list, and I had a, a, which I was so excited to hear because it was someone that I, you know, respected and I looked up to, and they called me and they said, oh my gosh, my grandchild, you know, what do you mean you're pulling their license? And 
I thought the call was going to be, you know, oh my gosh, I'm blasting the you know, school district. And it was, well, it's about time that the school made a stand on this. So there's going to probably be some very unhappy parents this afternoon because they, you know, the Florida Department of, um, of well, motor safety or whatever they pull them. Well, it's the parents should be, should pull the keys a long time before that. Yeah. So... Anyway. They get a call, right? Still, are we still using that system where you get a call if your kid's absent? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Does our call go out in the morning or afternoon? Do you know? I want to say it goes out around 10. Okay. 10 or 11? No? No, I think it's at the end of the day. It is the end of the day? Because okay. the it is. Our phones go. Because there was an issue about that that I was reading about, and the parent, the child was missing, and it was a criminal thing, and the, the issue was if I'd known sooner that they didn't arrive at school, I would have been looking for them a lot sooner. They used to go out about 10 a.m. in the morning. So that'd be great if you could, I mean, I think it might save us in the future from, because the parent was mad because they didn't know the kid wasn't in school and the kid was kidnapped or something terrible. Yeah, that was, that was I want to say um, one of Culpepper or Wiseman, it was somebody in their, in their group, it was, a family member and the child um, went to the bus stop and um, the school didn't notify him until later in the mm -hmm. afternoon that the child was um, not at school and they said what if we wouldn't have known prior to it had been all day long yeah so, so I will the next school board meeting do a um, report on this awesome um, okay so just a couple things I want to address um, the what mr. Blake was discussing so I went to the um, Washington Park community um, meeting and which I'm so glad to say that it is really starting to to grow and to they're starting to have a lot of participation and I think it's because of, of dedicated citizens that want to see great things happen to their community um, in the discussion there was a time where they allowed um, politicians to say a few words they 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 were allowed I think there were some questions asked of um, county commissioners and in one of the comments the comment was made well you know we've been waiting on for this for these bathrooms for three years but the school and I was like whoa well I knew nothing nothing about bathrooms no one has ever mentioned anything to me about bathrooms um, the only thing that we have ever heard um, that I've heard personally was there's a building to the right uh, if you're in this community center to the right and it's an old barn and um, Mr. Kelly had come and, and met with me and asked about possibility of change. They wanted to utilize that. Um, and so, and I took Al Brown out there and Al be said, Beth, he said, I think we need to condemn this because the building is, it's, it's not a good, it's not a good um, facility. It's, it can fall down and someone could get hurt. And, you know, um, there is a lease with the county for that property. So it kind of goes back to, you know, who's responsible, who that whole, that whole thing. But anyway, back to the bathroom situation. Um, so a discussion started and I'm like, I can tell, cause it just, it, it looked like they were playing ping pong. It was literally, let's see who we can point the finger at as somebody else's fault because we're not going to take ownership. And I'm not saying that against anyone that was there, but it, it felt that way to me. So I just said, I'll take this ball and run with it because you put it in my court when you said that the school district had, you know, that it basically was there and that we hadn't done anything for three years. Immediately, as soon as the meeting got out, the next morning, I sent um, June Fisher, the county manager, an uh, email. She responded, um, you know, very, very um, quickly. She sent me the, um, description of the work um, her email also and in, in has the drawings the architectural drawings of the bathroom and she just said um, if possible would this school board um, with the school board consider so this happened on Monday night so I am going to be putting this on the agenda for this coming school board which will be in two weeks for the school board to approve the um, building of bathrooms at Washington Park so well what I heard was 
that they got a quote and then they didn't move on it they I guess the county and then a couple years later the citizens were pushing again they got another quote and it had tripled from the first quote because of construction costs so when we met with Miss Fisher that day in your office right. a couple months ago I wasn't in that meeting oh you weren't oh that's right you were you were in the hospital well she didn't we were not ever contacted because she wasn't even aware that we were in the, that we owned that land. Correct. So, well, I, I said I spoke to the residents of Washington Park and I said I am sorry, but now yeah, that, that we've been put fault. in it, I'm in it, and so now that in two weeks you'll have fault. your. We didn't even know about it. So, so now, who's going to pay for that? That will be the county. The county will pay for the building. We just need to build a fire under them and tell them to get it done. So my understanding is once the school board has given given our approval for them to build the restrooms, then the county, it's on them to get it done. I don't understand why it's taken three years. I mean, I'm... Because in the lease, the reason it's got to come to us is I believe in the lease it says if they're going to do improvements on the property, they have to come to us. They've done improvements without coming to us. Correct. They put in a playground. They put in a basketball court. They've never come to so us that's before. that's just an excuse for why they haven't done the bathroom. No. I'm so, just well, saying. I'm going to take responsibility for it because I was at the meeting and I was the one that was sitting there going, oh my goodness, what, you know, because for, for a second there I thought, and I'm, you know, and out of no disrespect to any other group, but I thought, oh my gosh, here goes another Chalanica situation. Right. And I'm, we're not doing that. I mean, it, it took me having a conversation. It, it literally took minutes. It wasn't a big deal. So I will be putting this as to you next, or because I don't think I can do it um, today. I can't make an emergency motion or anything like this because you're going to need to see it, or I would. But if two weeks, I'd like to take this before you and you vote on it. We can give a consensus that we're bored. Can we? Well, then consensus. still, we, just, we could, could give a consensus today, but I think we still have to vote on it, don't we? Yeah, I wouldn't have any problem with them yeah. building a restaurant. So can we do it? Can I take a consensus where I can let Ms. Fisher know that the board is under consensus, but still also take it back in two weeks? Well, yes. formally yes. vote. A formally vote, but as of right now, do I have a consensus from the board that I can give her the go-ahead? Yes. yes. Got mine. Okay. I Thank see you. all heads shaking yes. So. All right. Well, that was easy. Yeah. Bureaucracy at its best, I guess you could say. Okay. Um, I want to, this is kind of, I'm real excited about this. This was brought to my attention by another um, school board member in another district. And um, and then my someone, a couple of superintendents called me and said, have you seen the Florida Policy Institute's rankings? And I'm like, no, I haven't. Um, I have a link I'm going to be sending out um, on, I'm probably going to put it on our website, but I'm going to send it to you board members through your email, but it ranks the, um, where we are as a district, um, and it breaks it down, it breaks it down like over, overall child well-being, child care affordability, economic well-being, education, health, family and community. Um, it breaks it down by children in poverty, unemployment rate, high housing cost burden, teens not in school. I mean, it's a very, very detailed um, report. And I'm just happy to report um, that out of 67 districts in education, um, Glades County is ranked 44, um, and which I'm not happy that we're 44 because I want to be number one. But if you look where we were in past um, years, we were a lot, lot lower. Um, and if you look at our um, surrounding, you know, counties, we we were a lot higher than them. So I'm really excited about that. But one of the things that I want you to look at in here, it talks about um, child care affordability, um, children in poverty. Um, and we're doing, and it, it rates it from where you were, if you were better, if you were worse, <laughs> if you're the same. In Glades County, um, our education system has gone better on all rankings. Um, and, you know, one of the things that I looked at, the unemployment rate is the same, which kind of concerns me, but we have to have jobs in order for these, these graduates that are, 
leaving our school district to, to, and I tech to to go to um, I was having a conversation with someone yesterday about the fact that you know we are graduating about 20 students a year with an AA degree and some of those students don't want to go into um, they don't want to go into higher education they want to end it two years and they want to stay local so we need to be able to have opportunities for them in Glades County so um, I'm really excited about um, all the the new building and stuff that hopefully is coming to Glades County but anyway I, I won't go into too much detail about this but I do ask that um, people in um, the community look at this report because I think when you see this report, you're gonna see the great things that are happening, not only in the school district, but in our community. Um, and like I said, it's very detailed. If, um, if you don't have a printer, you probably wanna go somewhere or come to us and we'll print it for you um, because it's, it's very, um, very interesting. And we had some students, we had quite a few students that participated in the Heartland Honor Band, um, which I was unable to attend Mr. Brick, um, I'm sorry, Mr. Um, What's your last name? <laughs> Gresseth. <laughs> Mr. Gresseth attended for me. Um, I want to thank him. I was unable to attend as I was in the hospital. I want to thank the board for your prayers. Um, I'm feeling a lot better, but I'm so sorry that I missed this event because he told me how amazing it was. And um, I also want to remind the board that, you know, I know we're on getting ready for funding season and we're getting ready to look at our budget that arts education is so important and, and we have a lot of students. And I'll never forget and Ms. Pro might not even remember this, but I give her, I try to give her a little kudos every once in a while. But um, when I was an assistant principal under Ms. Pro Want, we were having, we, our band was in a decline. We were having a hard time getting kids to, to participate in band. And I remember us looking at our budget and I, I, I'm like, let's just, and I mean, I was in band. I, everyone knows I, I was in band and I was, you know, very much in love being in band. But my statement was, well, let's just cut that program. There's only 15 kids in it. And I remember Ms. Pro once saying to me, you, you know, you're 15 kids, that's their world. And that, that is why those kids come to school. So I just want to keep that in your mind that, but our band in Glades County, you know, is in chorus and, um, everything that Mr. Browning's doing, um, I'm, I'm really proud of what, what all he's accomplished at, in that program. So today, um, actually, I I'm keep checking my phone because Mr. Brickle, um, it was supposed to happen this morning, but there was a, a holdup. Um, we will be announcing our Val and Sal today, and um, I will tell you that um, we had over 15 students with over 4.0 GPA, so it was a, it was a, a really tight race, and um, Val and Sal will be announced. And they may have already um, have done it, but I can't tell you until I've heard from him. We did get a call from the school district during the meeting. Maybe that was it. Well, that wasn't it. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Um, something else that I want to talk to you all about. Um, I I spoke with the high school. Um, I would like to maybe schedule a workshop with the board. I don't know how, how you want to proceed with this, but athletics um, is another reason a lot of students come to school. And, um, you know, it's very important for us to provide the, um, the equipment and the facilities that these athletes need that, are, um, that they can be proud of. Um, I asked Ms. Rhymes to provide me with a list of all the bills. Um, our travel bill is um, it's pretty high. So I would like to meet, I'd like to have a sit down with you all as a board and maybe have a discussion on how we can look at maybe putting that in our budget um, because there's a lot of fundraising going on. And if you're a business owner, um, you are getting hit every day you know can you give a donation and you know if you feel if you give to the football team and you don't give to the track team you feel bad but um you know just just an example our basketball um our basketball travel this year was two thousand six hundred and thirty three dollars um 
our soccer travel was two thousand one hundred and eighty five dollars and you know we are in a very unique situation because of the the distance that we have to travel to play um, to play these games um, but I just and I don't want to go into a, a long discussion today about it but I just want to maybe us have a conversation that we um, that we look at it and maybe come up with some different way to, to, to deal with this because when we've got kids that are going out in the community asking it, they're selling. I mean, they've had cake sales. We've had, I mean, if you, you know, I can't even name them right now. There's so many. They're always selling tickets. They're always selling. And, and it, they're, the money they're raising, our, our little community has given so I mean, abundantly. But, I mean, you keep giving and keep giving, and it's like, you know, when, where is there an end? So, at what point does a school district step up and say, you know, we're going to put, we're going to support them as well? Um, and I know that the school did pay for tra um, transportation. Um, anyway, so that's that. Um, well, if you'd like to schedule a workshop, I think you should go ahead and. So is that good with you all if we schedule a workshop and, and buy? If you could team it up with a day that we're going to be here anyway, that would be great. Okay. All right. So we can, I'll send that out to you all. Okay. okay. Is it better? Do you want, if we do it, um, is there another board meeting that, when's, because I don't want to wait till our next morning. The 21st is our next board meeting. Is it a morning? No, it's a so are you all come, okay coming in early on the 21st? Kim, I know you were, is that, is that okay? Because I would like to have, maybe have. Um, so you have the strategic plan, the athletics, and you're gonna have board policies. So here's the thing, I would really like it to where we could have some community input because I would like to invite the coaches to come as well because at the end maybe some of the members of the booster club because I think that it's important. So I don't want it to be where I don't know that I want it to be a workshop as much as I want it to be. I don't know. How can we do that? Hmm? Well, you, so, could, you could put it on the agenda as a, you know, not necessarily something that we would vote on as an information item, and we could discuss it and okay. all that. And then if we come to an, to an agreement or figure out how to fix it and put it on the next agenda to okay. be voted I don't know I'm just that would eliminate the need for the workshop okay we can and, in the evening you might get more have and be able to get more participation oh you can at the same yes, night yes ma'am okay that'd be good that would be good all right so there's that um I, I, you know, Ms. Pro once spoke about the meeting with the EDC, and um, I'm, you know, glad that we are, we came to a, a, you know, a good agreement. I think that what really was, you know, disheartening was the, the misinformation that was spread. You know, I had someone calling me and saying that, why are y'all taking away the rodeo grounds? And I said, what are you talking about? So I was really glad that we had the meeting and um, I, that we're able to utilize the 50 feet of our own property. Um, because we're going to be building a state-of-the-art elementary school for the community of Glades County um, and for Moorhaven. Our kids don't deserve um, the facilities that they have and the teachers that are in that building over there don't deserve that. Um, open enrollment, um, I think that, um, Brian, do you, wanna, do you wanna say something about open enrollment? Did you wanna say anything? Um. I mean, I would put our open enrollment policy, and we we may need to look at uh, just adding a, a little bit of verbiage, just in case. I, I know at our bus place right now, um, we have we have an overcrowding situation. We're we're, we're definitely well over our 85 percent. We're we're closer to closer to 90 percent capacity right now, and we have we have some class. Well, we have at least one classroom where. We are looking at when they move from one grade to the next grade, um, they're going to be over class size, and that's even without um, new kids coming <coughs> in. We know there's a lot of kids coming in, so 
one thing that we are looking at possibly considering is just if, if we end up with a whole bunch of kids in, in one grade that we may need to open up the lottery again and we, just for that grade level and you may have because at, at West Blades, let's, let's say, let, let's, let's just pick a class. Um, I can pick any class because we kindergarten, I pick kindergarten, kindergarten. okay? Um, there are at least 25 students that are in, in kindergarten that are on zone waivers. They are not Blades County residents. And we, we've always opened up for um, outside the, the zone because we had space and we, we know that that by having more students, that only helps us financially because each one of those students that comes in, um, their FTE is over $8,000. And so really, in the past, we've always wanted to have as close to capacity as we could, which we would like to do at our elementary and our high school, although we have plenty of room in both of those schools. But um, now with all the new construction that's going on, in that area and the new students that are coming in um, we're, we're finding that uh, we're we're running out of space uh, in fact that is one of the reasons we've talked about that we needed to um, actually cut one of the pre-k classrooms because we needed the classroom space for a regular classroom um, so I'm, I'm just looking at maybe bringing in some draft draft um, just, just, just some draft language of you know the possibility that if if we get too many kids in in one grade that we can we can do the lottery now we would do the lottery <coughs> sometime really like more in June or July prior to school starting so parents would have an opportunity to you know to involve their students at their home schools or if they can get us on way to go to another school but um, I think it's just something we're going to need to think about because. You know, we're going to be in a situation where, let's say, if we said kindergarten, we go to first grade. Now we're going to have 23, 24, 25 kids in the classroom where they're really only supposed to have a maximum of 18. Although the state does not does not penalize us for having over class size anymore. They used to do that, but um, we're we're trying to do what's best for kids, what's best for all our kids, and what's best for teachers as well because. Um, I know the teachers, they're, they have they have a tough job. They have a very tough job. And I know uh, Ms. Prolon, Ms. Barfield, you know, Ms. Drake, uh, you can, when when you started teaching, and when I started teaching way back in the old, old days, um, there were 32, 33 kindergartners in a class, or, and a first grade class as well. And, and the state has, has said, no, you can't have more than 18 now can't have more than 22 in grades four through eight. And they used to penalize us, we had to pay back FTE money if we had too many in the class size. But we do not, we do not have to pay that back anymore. So, um, but we had the language in the open enrollment policy, we could discuss it. Um, if, if we choose that we're just going to have 19 or 20 kids in a certain, in kindergarten, first grade or second grade, um, that's just a decision we can make as well. But I just wanted to wanted to bring that to your attention that you know we are looking at an overcrowding problem at at the West Blades School, and we we do have over over 200 kids that are not Blades County mm -hmm. residents that go to attend that school. So Mr. Grass, I have a question, and and I should have I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but and why you and I've never probably spoken of this, I don't know, but. Is it something that we could look into? Uh, I know um, counties use planners, like um, county planners or county, um, where you bring in a, maybe a company that looks at growth to see, because I don't, the growth that is in, is in Port LaBelle is substantial. I mean, I don't know how many building permits you've got going up there, but it's a lot. And then versus Muse, like, I'm just kind of wondering, is the growth, I mean, is, is are we putting our resources in the right place, I guess is what I'm saying. Because if the housing is at, if it's in Port LaBelle, should we not be looking at maybe 
putting something there versus putting something eventually in use? I, I, I would say yes, down the road you're probably going to be, be doing that. Is that like, is, does anyone know, is that, uh, is that, what is that called? Well, when they do the impact fee study, it will include that information that the county's going to do because they're going to, all that will be in the study. Is there land in Port Lavelle? So I've reached out to um, the gentleman who is the developer for Heartland Homes because they there's a lot of property. It, it's it's if you look at a land plat, um, not plat, but the land who owns what property, there are a couple of pieces and you know what you need for an elementary school versus what you need to build a you know a K eight school or whatever um, is different. Um, there there are a few. But they're individually, you know, individually owned. I, I just think that's why I'm asking. I don't know what that, the process that would be. Way down the road, because we, we would never be able to get any kind of special facilities funding to build a new, a new school there with our current enrollment. There, there's just not enough. Yeah. Um, and really, you know, what what they're going to look at as well is that you have plenty of room for your right. students. What you're doing mm -hmm. is you're taking over 200 of another districts. Right. And there may be some adjustments in, in the LaBelle area as well. When they build a new high school, they're going to now move some of the, uh, the middle school to the old high school, and they're going to put a couple elementaries, and, and then they're going, to, they're going to have more space in their, in, their, in their school. So there may be kids that end up going back to their home school. I know that, um, you know, we, we all know that the, the main reason they go to Westwood has got a very good reputation. And, um, and I'm, I'm sure they will continue to do that, but when, when special facilities funding looks, they're gonna look and see how many students you have and how many you think that you're gonna have. And we're, when we're saying that, you know, we're gonna need another school because we're looking at another 100 kids that are gonna be coming into Port Bell, that, that's not enough. Right. I mean, we're, we're, we're gonna be looking at adding a building. You know, that's what we plan to do after, after we have paid off our special facilities funding our plan right now is to is to ask for funding to add a building at the West Glade site Correct. so we can expand. So expansion is probably more realistic than a at building. At this time it is, yes. Was that on the initial special facilities request for the WEED? So when we did the special facilities <laughs> request originally, I mean, this is back before we were all here, um, I want to say... For West Glade, you mean? Yes, I'm talking about, yes. But I remember there being a conversation about how that, that could hurt us if, you know. Now you're, I think you're getting confused on this. Um, there, when, we, when we were starting off our special facilities request for the new elementary school, we wanted to add Correct. the West Glades expansion Correct. in with that. And we were advised from the state that um, that's probably not going to work. It's not going to fly through. But you have a great shot if you just focus on um, more I think that that was the original, and, and I could be wrong. I wasn't, I wasn't here, so I don't know. But I think that was the original conversation, Patty, Jenny. And yes. I think that's what Mr. Bass wanted. That was, I think, something he was wanting to do, which would have been great if they could have done that. But then when we took it to the special facilities, they said, focus on one. Because we that. did, actually, we were going to cons follow through with what they, um, they had said. So that's why... But I was thinking at some point there was a discussion held about that that might hurt us. And that could have just been you and I having that conversation. It could hurt us that, you know, with the numbers because so many were out of county. Right. So that's where I was getting that from. So I just I just think we need to, you know, because I, I know I'm asked. I don't know about other um, other people um, in the community have asked, you know, are, are we ever going to put, you know, a high school out there? I'm like, you know, we... If, and if you remember this, some of you that were on the board, I went out and proposed a ninth grade um, cohort um, and had, you know, we kind of, Miss Wills, if you remember, you know, I said we'd take that eighth grade group that was there, this was what, two years ago? Mm -hmm. A year? And I said, we'll take that eighth grade group, we'll keep them there, you know, and just build a year. Um, and the parents came and the kids came and I presented this program and the kids were like, and the parents were excited, but the kids were like, no, -uh, we want to go to high, we want to get, we've been here since pre, you know, since kindergarten, we want to get out of here. So, um, anyway, well, so. And, I mean, we have talked about the 
possibility because there is there is property out there on the north side that was actually designed. You know that's that's the point. The plan was to build a high school there at some point, but we're a long way from that because we would have. I know we can't afford to, to build our own school. We can't we can't afford to build an addition. You're talking eight to twelve million dollars to build a sixteen classroom building. We don't get that kind of funding. We, I mean we. we in order to do that, we would have to use our capital outlay money, and we would get about $1.2 million a year in capital outlay money. And that money is, is used if you need to replace a, an air conditioner, if you need to fix a roof, if you need to do any kind of repairs to schools, um, upkeep, all those kinds of things. That's all included in that. And, and that price tag, Mr. Wiseman can tell you, goes up every year. So there, I mean, even if we were to say well, we didn't fix a darn thing for the next, you know, eight years, and saved our money to build a new school, I mean, that's a possibility. But I mean, things are going to break down. We know that. Mrs. <coughs> Parker, but um, so really, that's that's long term in the future. I mean, there have to be a lot of growth. Thank so, you. something that was out there, a couple of parents were asking if there was anything that they could do to help to make donations. Who can they contact if they want those? Do they call the district office to talk to you? Donations so towards what? And, and money donations, property, and they've mentioned all kinds of things. I just don't know who for can they what, call. For what purpose? For any they? needs of the district. Um, yeah, they can contact, well, they can contact probably Mr. Boyles or me. I, I mean, I'm really, he's the, over facilities. He, he's over maintenance and facilities. I'm, I'm over the new facilities. I mean, so if there's anyone together, wanting to make well. any type of donations to call the school district and talk to Mr. Boyles? Yeah, and that we are, if it's like athletics related or if it is instructional related, they would determine who we need to go to after that. There have been discussions about, you know, creating, you know, athletic or alumni organizations at certain sites to help supplement some of the activities that are going on with athletics, <coughs> which is a great idea. Uh, but yeah, I've, I've had business people reach out to, to me as well, wanting to, to get involved. Okay. Primarily at West Glades, uh, with LaBelle and, and so, so forth. So. But I think too, I think, I think what, um, so I don't know if you've heard from the same, I heard someone say, well, we tried to do a donation and the school district turned it down. Well, we, I mean, the school district, we want any donation we can get. I mean, we are, you know, we are a public education system and we want whatever we can get. But sometimes things that people donate are not, are like we have, there's a process that we have to go through. Like we have to make sure that there's a safety feature of it or, you know, like, like just like if somebody wanted to donate, uh, I'm just going to, you know, sand for the playground. Well, we can't, you, you know, you and I would think, well, that's an easy, you know, sand for the playground. How difficult? Well, it has to be a certain type of sand. It has to have a certain rating. I mean, there's not just, we can't just take whatever anyone wants to give us. But we are, anybody that wants to make a donation, we definitely are, we definitely want to work and with you. And what's that phone number? <laughs> that phone number? 946 2083. And if somebody has $8 million that they'd yes. like to donate, we'll build a wing of West that's right. Thank you. I have ten more things. Okay, Could go I ask ahead. Them a question? Mm -hmm. So the kids that we took for kindergarten, you said we had 20, 25 we have, we have out of twenty five zone labor students at each grade level. Okay, I just, I just picked that. Okay, that I I was under the assumption that those children, once we let them in, are grandfathered in until eighth <laughs> grade. Is that not yeah. correct? No. They, they they are, but unless they're Unless there's a need, unless there's a change with that. They, but they, our existing they, they, policy, we existing could not policy. send them a letter in April and say, hey, we're not going to have room in fourth grade for your kid. It doesn't say we can't, but it doesn't okay. say we can't. But we've never but we done that. Do that. We haven't had to do that. No. Right. It hasn't right. been until now. Right. But now it is an issue yeah. that we might have to, even though you've been there K through six, right. we might have to tell them we don't have room for you in seventh and eighth. Correct. Okay. All right. Yeah. That'll be fun. There are there are some places that that, that parents have to fill out a zone waiver every year. Yeah. yeah. We have just when when a, when a student is accepted as a zone waiver, we just allow them just to stay. Well, and that might be a good place for us to start. Is their annual? You have to reapply every year, and based on the space in the grade your kids in. Right. 
and we can do that. Uh, I'm just, we just, we've never had to get to that point. Yeah. And right, right now, yeah. we're, yeah. we're not. I mean, we're very close to that. Point. Right. I mean, like we, if there, we have one one grade level that right now. If they were to move on, one of the classes would be over grade. Over class have 19 size. in it, yeah. and the other have 18. Although, you know, that's that's not. That's, that, that's very common. That's very, I mean, even at, uh, at more Haven Elementary School, there are grades that have more than yeah. the max. But we have to remember, and I, and I appreciate what you said, that they don't fine us for that, right. but it is still against the Florida law to overcrowd your it classrooms. Is. And that's we correct. could be written up in an audit or other, you know, fined or, they don't fine anymore. And we used to take the fine, because the fine was less than hiring the new teacher. Correct. So we took the fine. Personally, I'm against that because I was a teacher. To me, class size is super helpful. The smaller, the better. The, right. the smaller the ratio, the better. But um, we have two class, like we have two grade levels at Moorhaven Elementary that are over 100% capacity. And yeah, we have our second grade and our third grade are both at, one's at 102% capacity and one's at 106% capacity. Which means that there, there's three classrooms, they each, there are two of the three classrooms have one more student than okay. capacity. Okay. And at West Glades you have one, two, two classes at a, over 100, but you have several that are at 90 plus. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely something we need to yeah. be thinking about. I mean, that's our I, I think it's something we need to at least have in there so that we um, we're prepared for this. I mean, if, if, it, if, we, if it comes out in in May or June that all of a sudden now we have an influx of, of third graders and we're going to be instead of having 18 in the classroom, we're going to have 23. You know, we we need to handle that. I would think. Yeah, I agree. I mean, uh, but you're in the school board; you can make the decision. So this was on one of our workshops and we ran out of time and did not get to it. When we do our school athletic travel workshop, can we add this to the agenda? I thought we weren't going to do it. I thought we weren't going to. We still have a workshop. We still have work policy. Okay, then yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. We still have to have a workshop. Okay, I have two I'll more things. I just want to, I want to make a comment because piggybacking off of what Crystal said, as a teacher, that number is important and it is but as a former teacher I can tell you that 18 is an arbitrary number I could teach just as good with 16 in the class or 20 in the class it's there's a lot of flexibility there with that number as far as being an effective teacher I think now it does change once they get to 30 <laughs> it does but you know <laughs> I mean, I, Crystal I mean, may remember it, 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 when I first started teaching math at Moorhaven Middle High School, I was in a little tiny classroom squeezed in between Laurel Ahern and the home ec department. And there were times I had 32, 33 kids in there teaching them algebra and geometry. And we survived and they know how to use algebra today <laughs> <laughs> because I talked to some of them. You know, yes, it makes it more difficult, but it, it's an arbitrary number. Just because it's in law doesn't mean that that's the magic number, and if you get one more, you can't be effective. Yeah. And it depends on who that one more is. <laughs> well, that's true. That's true. <laughs> it's Joey Drake. <laughs> yes. What time is your class? Is it right after lunch? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I have a question, Mr. Wiseman. Um, I think just because I, I mean, and I don't mean to keep bringing this up, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but I think if I, what I heard Mr. Blake say, and I think it, for me, I think it would be, I would like to have this. Um, is there a list of like potential, not jobs necessarily, but like, okay, we're going to need painters. We're going to need, you know, is there a way that we could have some sort of a list? Because for me, what I'm thinking is, okay, well, let's see, I've got, you know, I know I've got a bunch of students that are getting ready to graduate, and we've got a lot of people in the community that are looking for jobs. So maybe if they knew that we needed potential, I don't know, painters or window installers, or is there? And they're qualified. They're called to it. Because if, it, 
you want to make sure that they're qualified so that they can they can, can, they can work these them. jobs they don't want to get here when the jobs are listed and go darn if i'd have known that i could have been a window installer i could have gone and taken a class or something yeah, is so there a, the, 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 the design development drawings are supposed to be complete and approved by the, the district on april 22nd okay right after that is when we're going to start you know, we'll strategize but right after that when we're going to start letting everybody know here's what's coming and here's all the things that are going to be needed we call them bid packages for the companies okay. subcontractors so we'll let everybody know what the bid packages are and then for some of the local companies um, our estimating guys try to break those packages down into smaller groups because you don't want to you know some companies aren't used to doing a two million dollar job but they can do a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar like the concrete company, we may have them separate a package up to just do the sidewalks. So a smaller company, a small local company that does sidewalks, they can do the sidewalks at the school, but they may not want to do all of the beams and, and heavy formwork parts of the project. That's not what they do. Okay. So we'll try to break the packages down to, to get as much community involvement as possible. And I'm even talking about even to break it down to $2,500 jobs. I'm talking, you know, I know you're talking 250 and 2 million, but I mean, even lower because, you know, we are, and if you look at the report that, that we did get from the state, you know, Glades County, our unemployment rate is so high. Um, if, if, you know, if we could just get some people with some jobs and, and to increase revenue within our community, and that would just be second, great. That's the second part of it is okay. encouraging people to, you know, we subcontracted companies, but then getting those companies to hire the, the, as many local people as possible. Thank you. And so that's 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 our goal. Okay. And then but I have with, just with that too, though. If that if I, if I can make a recommendation, even that workshop, we even talk about the the school plans, the layout. Um, I know I, I put in I put in um, this week's um, board report or whatever. You know, if, if if any of you want to put your eyes on on the, the schematics of this. You know, please come on in, take a look, see if there's an adjustment we should make. There's, we should move this room here and move that room there. I actually put the floor plan, a copy of the floor plans at the elementary school uh, a couple months ago, to, and was trying to get ideas of, of some some things that they they saw that there was a need for, and I, and I got I got input from a couple people, but uh, and uh, you know I brought Al Brown in, Al Brown's. We've sat down for a couple hours looking over over the plans. Uh, Mr. Boyles has, has been a, a great input. I mean, he's he's asked all kinds of great questions, and he's uh, he's seen things that I don't see. So, but you know, it's great to get everybody's eyes on there. I think we've got a I think we've got a, a really good floor plan right now. Great layout. But um, um, you know, if there's a tweak here. If you need to move the wall, you know, a foot this way so we can get a little square more square footage in one classroom and another. But you know. Well, like um, I showed it to, I showed it, I showed it to, I, should, I don't know if I showed it to you. I showed it to someone where uh, we're planning on having ESE classrooms, and they said, "Hey, well, this could be a full-time classroom. It really should be a shower." So we added a shower in that in that bathroom in that full time. I mean, those little things we want to be able to see those now, so we don't have to add those later. You know? so. Do you know the average square footage of the classrooms in the new school? Uh, average about 900 square feet. Yeah. Now, there are some that are going to be like eight, eight, eight seventy-six. I think maybe one of the smaller ones, and then there's there's bigger ones too, like the the, the art room and the music room. They're over a thousand square feet. But each one of the classrooms, that's that's just the classroom space. But they also are going to have a, a storage area in each classroom, and they're going to have a bathroom. Okay. Is that larger than the high school? Class, class size. about the same. The student, about, yeah, I think the student stations for high school is just a little bit bigger than the elementary. So those classes seem really small to me in the high school. Mm -hmm. They do. I hope our elementary. Uh, I square foot's pretty a pretty good size right now. Is One it? time, they were building schools about a thousand square feet, and but like there are my my Andy Dade right now is building. They're they're not their all learning classrooms about six hundred fifty square feet. Oh wow. Yeah, they're small classrooms. Okay, I just got Thank a you. couple more things, and then I, I'll be, we've got to go to our part because we have the workshop. But um, just want to say that you know, and and I know that a lot of the community watches our school board meetings, and it's so important that they do. 
Um, but while you're watching it, also, and I encourage the board, if you know of businesses hiring um, internships, we have a lot of students that are needing opportunities for to, to experience different things. Um, and we've, we've got this new school coming and we need apprentice, apprenticeships and, um, you know, just working with our tech. So I've been working, I met with um, Rosemary from the EDC um, about some opportunities that are going to be coming up for our students and just trying to get certifications for some of our kids. Um, and so I think that, you know, I encourage anyone in the community that also, you know, might be listening to the meeting or those that, that are here tonight or today, um, that you, if you know of somewhere that might be hiring, that you consider giving our local students an opportunity. Um, and then the only other thing I have to say is, you know, you know, as a someone that's, I, I'm totally entrenched in social media, you know, I, I keep, I do the school district's social media, I do a lot of it, I should say, I do my own personal, I have a business, I do the, it, their social media. Um, I have a daughter that that's what she went to college for, I mean, it, so I'm all about the social media. But I just want to say that I appreciate when people come to our meetings and even though, you know, you know, I, I applaud you for coming and, and stating, you know, you know, your beliefs. Um, and I think that it's important that we hear from you know, the community and I encourage people to come to make phone calls to us as, as myself as a superintendent, come make an appointment, you know, if you have a concern. Um, but, you know, I just want to say to the school board that, you know, we, we have to, we cannot be led by social media, um, people complain on social media because I, I want to tell you, I'm really, it really is disheartening that the misinformation that is shared. And if they come to a meeting or they call a school board member, then that's, that's different. But, um, a lot of things can blow up quickly when misinformation is spread. And I think we saw that. And so I just encourage the public to come to the meetings, call your school board members, you know, call me, make an appointment, come in, email me. And um, I want to close with this. I want to I want to thank um, the the people that came to my office, made an appointment. I met several on the weekend and came up and and talked to them about the Chalinica situation. Um, and you know, even though I don't think that we had the same opinion or viewpoint, I think we we had a great meeting and we were able to leave there understanding each other and where we stood on the side. Um, and so. You know, if anyone in the community wants to ever have a conversation, and I know Jackie's probably gonna throw something at me when I say this, but I'm available on the weekends. I'm available. So, and, and as long as as long as it's you know negotiable as far as times and that, I, I'm here. And I know each of you are as well. You know, if anyone's ever wanted to talk to any of you, you all have been very open. So, um, I just ask that. That's all I have to say about that. Um, and other than that, I, that's all I have. Okay. And I'll have some reports for you for next school board meeting. Awesome. Are there any other comments by the board? Mm -hmm. All right, meeting adjourned. We have to go right.